Hi everyone, I'm Matthew from Professional CAD Systems. Thanks for joining me uh, for the webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, then use the, there's a chat panel on the right hand side of the um, actual webinar itself that you can write any questions as we go, or you can email me um, direct with any questions. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can with answers to your questions. But again, thanks for joining and let's, let's get started and um, learn more about Spirit. We're going to look at three different ways we can dimension within Spirit. The first one is I'm going to use the um, the Zach dimensioning system. I've created a floor plan here, which is smart um, created with smart walls, and I, this system will only work with smart walls. So I'm going to go into architecture and dimensions. And here we have the settings for the dimensions. It's going to dimension interior walls, exterior walls, and openings within that particular wall. And dynamic is on. I'm going to turn dynamic off and just go into the settings. And I can set the distance I want the dimension from the wall. And in this case, it's a meter. That's fine. And the second dimension line will be 700. Yep. And the third dimension line, 700. Right, so once we've done that, we just right click once out of that, and I should now be able to just click on that wall left mouse button click and it places the dimension. Click on this and it places the dimension. But what it did was it, it placed the dimension um, a meter from that wall and a meter from that wall. So I might just undo that and just change something here. So let's just do it again. We'll go into architecture. Uh, dimensions and sorry architecture dimensions there we go settings and we're just doing a save here settings okay distance from the wall I'll make that 2000 enter all right so right click with my mouse click on that wall and it puts those dimensions two meter two meters from that wall so what I can do now is turn on dynamic so I can left click and click that wall and actually snap using your um, end key on your keyboard or the middle scroll just press that and I can place that dimension place that dimension so you see here we're dimensioning that and we're getting the sill height for that window as well as uh, the opening size of it so that's a 1800 opening window it's probably giving me the jam and what it is um, including the jam. So that's one way you can use um, what we, I would call the architecture system to create um, dimensions when you're doing a floor plan, just for floor plans only. The next method of dimensioning is just the standard uh, from the standard dimension menu. If I go annotate, I've got dimension and you have linear for the type of dimensions I'm going to do on this floor plan or you've got angular circular um, ways of dimension. Let's go linear. I'm going to go to first of all dimension editor and just make sure my settings are set because I use a particular um, font called Architext. Text is 250 high which is 2.5 millimeters. So I can have my settings here, the colors and everything I want for that. I'm just going to load that PCS. There we go. Now I have found that in the past, if I've imported a DWG file, sometimes it's changed all my settings for my dimension. So if that happens, I can quickly go and just load my settings and go OK. So here we have a few things that we can set text style, which we've already done in the editor, but you can change a text style and a dimension style and so forth. What I do, though, is I use a quick key, uh, Alt-D for dimensions on my keyboard. And I've done quite a bit of work to that because what's going to happen is the text for the dimension is going to be a certain size relative to the plot scale of this. So let's have a look at our plot scale is 1 to 50. I'll make that 1 to 100. And my text size for a dimension should be 2.5. If I go Alt D, it automatically takes me into the dimension menu and it sets some things here within that key. I'll just go and have a look at it first. Let's go help toolbars, keyboard shortcuts. You get this dialog and further down to where we have alt. I won't explain how it works in this lesson but alt D there you can see it's a whole string of 
of codes. It sets the go back. It sets the color. It um it sets the down the 2.5 for the text size and things like that. So I'm going to go Alt D, and then I'm going to use the, what we call Auto Dimension, which is my kind of preferred dimension. Auto Dimension. It's my preferred dimension when I'm doing things like a floor plan. So I can run a dimension. I can left click there and run a line there and left click. Now, it didn't work. Now, the reason for that is, is what I'll show you. The a dimension layer is the active layer. This will only work if it's on the same layer as the walls. So I've got to right click and set active. Perfect. So now we'll do auto dimension. We'll run through that again. You can put your big cursor on if you want so you can see where you're lined up. I just push the plus key on the keyboard to do that and place the dimension. The next one, I might put that big cursor on. I want to go through there and turn it off so I can see. I'm going to left click and place that there. And I think I've got everything. And then I can um, probably just right click once. Then I can use a string line dimension with dynamic turned on. So I can go there and there and and place that and then just dynamic and then just snap to that. Scroll wheel down, one little click, one little click. Right click with your mouse. Overall will come up and then you can place an overall dimension like that. And with this method, what I will do is I just use Erase, E on the keyboard, or Erase, under um, 2D Edit, and you've got Erase. I kind of take out the extra redundant um, dimensions. I might just use the Line tool to snap on those to put where you, you've got things coming through and they line up. And that comes down to there. Just with the line tool to put the, the leader type thing. And you can use the, in that dimension tool, if we go back into it, uh, it was an annotate dimension, uh, edit dimension, and then you've got, um, we should have here somewhere, import suffix linear. Dimension style, not in there, it's in um, modify, I'm looking for modify text position. So if I click on that, it will rotate that round the right way, like that, or you can pick that up and move it somewhere else if you want to with that modify. Note that when you, when you do select with the selection cursor, you select that, you have some things come up here. You've got Relocate dimension, which is the same thing as I did. Reset the text dimension text, or you can click on here and you can mirror it. So if it if it is back to front in some way, you can actually mirror that text um, to the position you want it to be at. So that was auto dimension. Um, very very quick, very straightforward. The beauty of these types of dimensions is. There, um, when I dimension, if I go back into right click, uh, dimension, linear, I had associative turned on, which meant that when I, when I stretch the floor plan, because associative is turned on, and I'll stretch that, the dimensions update with that. So they're associated or connected to the actual floor plan. Now the last method of dimensioning is just a standard um, dimensioning. I'm not going to use auto, I'm just going to um, dimension different points on this particular foundation plan. This is a timber foundation plan. We've got joists here, bearers and, and timber piles. And I'm going to dimension the centers of the actual piles. So again, either annotate um, dimension, but me I'm going to do Alt D. My scale is set to 100 to 100, so everything's going to be set up. I'm just going to change the color to blue, so it's, it stands out in the white background a bit easier. So with this dimension, I'll just go. Um, I'm going to turn dynamic on, but I'm also going to set under the. I think it's under dimension style and the increment. The increment is going to be uh, not two, 
but it's going to be maybe seven enter okay so and the overlap I've already set those that's two that's that's the overlap of the dimension sort of line and then you've got the um, overrun um, one and then they've got you've got things like you can see I just right click out of that you can see the text style and how far the text is off the dimension line and all that sort of stuff associate is on I want that okay dynamic so here we go I'm going to start my first dimension snap to that point to the center of that and then you'll notice with dynamic you can put it either vertical or or that way it goes a different color when you're following the, the different axes but I want to stay on the red if I click it left click on the red it locks onto that and then I can just place that and place my first dimension the next I would snap there 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 and now it's asking me do I want to place that yep and then I would go along I can probably do that because they all you can right click and it will place it and if I do if I, there 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 and there I'm just do go along quite quickly to do these and there and there and right click and place that so you can either manually place it or right click and place it so there's the dimension the first line of dimensions so now I can do the next line and I should be able to use increment um, I might just do it this way increment so I will snap um, there oh, sorry increment I've got to pick that dimension and then I can place it see when I set the 700 in this case it's going to be 700 millimeters so I can place that there and then I can snap there there and there and right click overall will come up for an overall so again now you notice how it's it's, it's jumping in seven that increments if I put the cursor to the side I can free wheel that up um, to where I want it to be but I want that to be there and then again I would just join up the lines um, like that and then I put out um, well I'll do it this way again uh, under dimension uh, edit dimension and you go see I'm looking at the wrong that's edit dimension differently it's linear and then it's modify text position and I can sort of place that and place that out of the way um, from that and I can probably where that joins up that joins up there so I've dimensioned the centers of these um, piles and I've used that under linear I've used that um, dynamic setting for doing that particular dimension maybe um, lastly I'll just do a circle and we'll just look at that quite straightforward when you come to the um, right, under um, like radius you just pick on the circle and then oh, right click and then you've got the radius for that circle so they're quite straightforward dimensions but before we leave this this particular tutorial um, you can do things like if we if I click on that I that dimension I get this here and I can say insert opening height but insert opening text so here I can write um, uh, foundation plan enter so you can put a, a note under the actual dimension just showing what that particular dimension is dimensioning and just lastly we need we can actually um, do one more thing here that you need to know about we just go into our wherever it went annotate uh, dimension edit dimension we can add a, um, a prefix or a suffix and you can delete them if you don't want them but input prefix I'm going to um, select that click on that line and it comes up here and I could type over all enter and then click on that line and it puts that overall 16 uh, 790 for that and I guess if I right click uh, go back to um, here delete prefix and click on it and it takes it out
All right, that's it. Um, just a brief introduction, but that's it for um, dimensions. We're going to look at adding notes to our drawing. There are a number of ways in Spirit to um, use notes or an annotation. Um, and we're going to go through those. So the first one I'm going to use is just a generic method of adding notes. So I'm going to go to Annotate and Text. And here I can set the text size. I'm going to make that um, 2.5. It'll display as 3 because I haven't got in my um, settings down here uh, points turned on. So that's okay. Angle, um, the angle will be just um, 0 degrees. The slant, the slant is to do with, you can create like an italics. Aspect is to do with the actual, if we go in close, is to do with the length of the actual note. Generally I'll have the aspect set to um, just 1. You can see that there, 1. Right click out of that. And if we go in down further we've got text scale. And a text scale means if I have that turned on or off, when it's on I will import 2.5. When it's off I'll actually import 250. It's like a world setting. And I use all caps. I do all my notes in, in capital letters. If we go to text settings here, um, I've got the text font set to architect, which isn't a standard um, true type font. It's one that I use. I've imported. So I'm using a true type font. You do have the ability to go to the old style character fonts, which are like a, a line type, a line that makes up the actual text, but I don't use that. The fill, fill color, I can set to uh, white, and I don't have outline turned on, so I just use the fill color to actually show the text. If you use the outline turned on, what's going to happen is if you're, if you're using various drawing colors as you draw, they're all set to pen weight, so if you accidentally use a, a color for your text which is a very dark pen weight then it will display all incorrect so I just leave that off I don't have to worry about what color I'm actually using okay we can go okay on that and all you do with this there's the text there I can click there on screen and type cladding and then if I want to join on the end of it, I can actually snap to that. I can put the cursor there and snap and push space and type hardies. So it's just a, uh, a generic way of adding notes around the drawing. I can select with the selection cursor that because I did them in two parts, they will select in two parts like that. So. It's okay, and what I do a lot of in a drawing is I use the eyedropper. I've already got a piece of text here, which is the right size um, for this particular plot scale, because that's one thing you're going to have to watch. The plot scale is set to 1 to 50, so my text size at the moment is 2.5 or 3 mil high at 1 to 50. So, but if I use the eyedropper, if I drop that bit of text there, I'm immediately using the same text and generally I'll use 2.5 mil for a note and if I use the eyedropper on this I use 5 mil for a heading so I only have really two sizes and I'll raise that in my drawing so what I've also done is I've created because because it's very important that you um, your plot scale and your text size suits. I've created a method of um, with a toolbar. I've just made my own toolbar. And I've got one here called Edit, and in the Edit toolbar, I've got a three mil text. I click on three mil, and I am creating three mil text. Click on five mil. And I'm creating so what this toolbar does it always sets me up at the right size relative to the plot scale for instance if I was going to plot this not that I'm going to plot it at 1 to 100 and I need to that's just a bit off screen but anyway I'll just come down 1 to 100 so it's 1 to 100 so if I choose 3 mil now it is the right size to suit my plotting at 1 to 100, 5 mil. So it sets that up at the right size. So what you can also do is 
uh, I can edit that if I use the selection cursor I can double click on that and it brings it up here and I'm going to call it three millimeter note note and one underscore 100 enter so I can edit the note quite quickly and simply but I'm going to make this a um, into a style so I can use it over and over again so I'm going to do that now okay with the erase tool I'm just going to erase raise those out that I've got okay so I'm going to create a style from this so what I need to do is um, select it right click or in my case control right click I'm going to generate a style and I'm going to use the right text like that and it's asking me where do I want to save it and I'm going to save it here and I'm going to call it three millimeter text and one to 100 so it's going to be three millimeter high text at when I put it on the drawing that's going to be printed at 1 to 100 and we go save and it's going to save that here we are it's done so we've saved that as a style if I go into the into here resource browser and styles and we we'll go to text not sure if this is going to show up in here but here we go three millimeter text at 1 to 100 so all I do is drag and drop that out and I'm immediately creating the text that I need so what it does, what a style does it, it it remembers the size you've created but when you drag and drop it you're immediately in that tool to create text and so you could create a, a whole series of these. You could create a, a three millimeter at one to one hundred, a five millimeter at one to one hundred, and create um, a library of text sizes that you can just drag and drop and immediately create text with. Now the second way you can create text within Spirit is if I go into the annotate menu, I've got text block, and I'm going to create new. This opens a word processor that's built into spirit and you can choose the actual font architect um, the size is um, 12 and what was, what you have to do with this so is you have to know the sizes here that are going to suit the plot scale that you're going to use but anyway this is um, I'll do it in all caps okay text block text and okay and then you can just click that left click that into your drawing and I'll push O and obviously you see it's way too small for the actual scale that I'm using but with this one if I double click it I open it again I wonder if I can change that to um, I might try changing it to 24 see what happens if I use 24 like that and okay and there we go so you, you can edit it after the fact you can save them um, these particular notes if I go text block you can load them so you can save them and load them um, from a, like a library um, that you can use in the drawing over and over but I'm going to show you um, another method that I use and prefer okay so this is the third way that you can create notes or annotation for your drawing and it's the way that I use it I use um, word RTF files uh, within the drawing so for every every drawing that I do I'm just going to bring this over and show you so for every drawing I do I have a job folder and that job folder will be called um, the, usually the clients name I've got this Jones folder here in that I would have uh, my calculation so I, I would have things like the bracing calc um, deck bracing drainage units um, for your pipe sizes and a, a method of doing H1 calculation which is a thermal efficiency calculation and then I'd have where I put my finished plans any images that I'm going to use in the drawing um, job info any emails or info I get about the job 
and where I put old drawing files. So what, what, what that means is if I'm working on a drawing and the people change it, I might put the drawing in there as the old one and start a, um, save it as a new name and keep the old one just in case they go back to the previous version of it. Okay, and I also have this one here, which is a folder called Keynotes. It's a, it's a generic folder, and it goes into every job that I do. And you, you can't use this globally. Otherwise, if you change a note, it'll change in every job that you've ever used it in. This folder must be in the, the job that you've done. I go Keynotes, and here are all my generic notes that I would use within a drawing. So at the top, at the top I've got um, a template so I can open that it's a blank one and I can save it as a name but I'll just show you how this works I'll just take that away so within spirit I have projects this is the open project at the moment and here's this folder keynotes so I would go expand that I'll just bring that over a bit and if I want to have a note about the deck Joyce for instance I will drag and drop that into the drawing. What's the way these are created is they will always be in the drawing at a scale of one to one hundred, and that will suit. But hard to understand. But um, I'm just going to make that one to one hundred, one to two fifty. That will suit the actual plot scale, and you can see that it's way too big because the plot scale, compared to everything else, the plot scale is one to one hundred. But this section is going to be printed at. Um, I'm just going to get that down there. It's going to be printed at 1 to 50. All right, so I've set that. So what I can do, that's the wrong one there. I can select it. And in the object inspector, I can tell it it needs to be 1 to 100. And there we are. It's the right size. M for move. And I can pick it up there and place that there. So they always are placed at a scale of 1 to 100. And which is relative to the actual plot scale of that drawing, but they can be changed after the fact, and they will always be the right size. The beauty of these is here's the two notes exactly the same. When I use these within the drawing, if I double click and open this word file, and I'm going to bring that across 400 centers, I'm going to make the Joyce 140 45 at 600 centers, and close and save that. So there they, there's that exact same note there and there, and they both update. So it's like a, it's a keynote, it's a live note. So I don't have to worry about in the drawing changing something somewhere and it not be changed somewhere else. So that's my preferred method is to use these, and I, I just get them from the project, and here they are within the drawing. The keynotes. Now I'm going to show you one other little thing with these. I'm going to get rid of that. If I bring in another drawing into here with a whole lot of notes already on it, let's just say we go into, we're going to create a layer. We'll go into uh, arrow across, layer, and I'm going to right click here and go new layer, one new layer, and I'm going to call this roof detail. Okay, so I'm going to right click and active only. So I'm going to use a um, get a detail which has already been created. I'm going to go in here and I've got a whole lot of myself. Minimize that symbols here, CAD details, uh, roofing details, roofing details from mono pitch. Okay, I'm going to double click and open that file. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to go, it's under Edit, Clipboard Select, but Clipboard Select or Control e and I'm going to get that there, and I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. So I'm going to go Control Tab on the keyboard, and I can flick back to my drawing, and now I'm going to go Control V, which is a Windows for Paste, and I could click Absolute Zero, the active layer that I've got. Yep, that's okay. Absolute zero. And I put those notes there in my drawing. 
Now I've used um, yellow a bit, so yellow doesn't show up, so good on white background. So I'm going to select that yellow, I'm diversing a bit here. I'm going to say, yep, that color yellow with the wand, I'm going to get everything in the drawing that's yellow, and click there, and I'm going to change it to blue. And there we go, and everything with yellow is now blue, so you'll see that better. Okay, so these, this is just a, a, a my standard details, but it's got generic notes here, and you see that they're not quite right. But what I need to do with this, and you have to remember to do it um, with each drawing, is I'm going to go into the File Manager. File Manager. And here you'll see the actual um, notes that I've dragged and dropped. So the notes that are, that are in the drawing are these ones... Well, they're down here, which is this, I called it example, um, keynotes. But these ones I've just brought in are from my master folder. So I need to change those. I don't want them to be from the master folder. Because if I change one of those notes here, it's going to change um, globally in wherever I use it. So I'm going to select that and go all the way up to the last RTF, that one there from master, all those. I'm going to go locate and here is where Dropbox, I path everything from my folder example. I path everything to find it within this particular drawing that I'm using, Keynotes. And you'll note that they all path to example, Keynotes. Okay. And they'll probably change because these have already been updated. So I've repathed all those notes. This one here is not quite right. So I can select that move it down, um, change any with a stretch, um, there, I can change any arrows that aren't kind of working, and so on, and so these notes are now RTF, so if I select that note there, in the, it's a reference file cladding the roof, and if I look here, it's giving me the path so you can change that path um, within here as well, within the object inspector, and choose a different note. Um, so I hope that explains um, several ways to annotate your drawing. Again, there are kind of three. There's a generic one, there's a text block, and then there's these RTF reference notes um, that you can use as well. That now brings us to the end of uh, this webinar. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've gained new skills and insight into some of the workings of Spirit as I've gone along. For those who have entered questions in the chat box, we'll get back to you with the answers to those as soon as possible. And uh, failing that, if you have any questions, you can email me or Softech um, with the given email addresses, and we will answer those questions uh, as soon as we can. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day.